أهلا بكم في اليوم العلمي الأول لمركز المهارات السريرية 2020 بالجامعة الليبية الدولية للعلوم الطبية. لقد تأسس مركز المهارات السريرية بالجامعة الليبية الدولية في العام الدراسي 2007-2008 كمحاولة لإقحام الطلاب بممارساتهم المبكرة للمهارات السريرية وتعزيز خبرات مهنية في بيئة آمنة بمنع عن المرضى منعا لحدوث الأخطاء الأولية المتوقعة من قبل الطلاب أثناء التدريب الجامعة الدولية يبدأ الطلاب بالسنوات الدراسية الأولى للتعرف على المهارات المهنية في مجال الخدمات الطبية عن طريق المحاكاة باستخدام الدمى التعليمية ويتكرر ذلك طوال السنوات الدراسية وفق برنامج التعليم المعتمد لكل كلية حتى وصول لدرجة إتقان والتلقائية في الأداء مع نهاية السنوات الدراسية إلى جانب نشاط تعليمي يقوم مركز تنفيذ دورات تدريبية معتمدة تستهدف أطباء الامتياز وأطباء حديثي التخرج وتهدف لتطوير أدائهم وتعزيز قدراتهم في فروع الطب مختلفة في إطار توثيق نشاط المركز وتعزيز قدرات العاملين به وتوطين مبدأ التنافسية الحميدة تقرر تنفيذ اليوم العلمي الأول للمركز حيث يقوم مشرفين تعليمين بالمركز بعرض المهارات التي يشملها البرنامج التعليمي والتدريب للمركز ستكون المادة معروضة متوفرة للطلاب مما يمكنهم من اطلاع عليها على مدار السنة كما سيتم فرز أفضل العروض من قبل لجنة تقييم مخصصة لتضمن المكرمين في اليوم العلمي بالجامعة متوقع عقده يوم 19-12-2020 كبير وروح عليا نفتتح أولى فقرات اليوم العلمي بكلمة الدكتورة إيمان الحاسي مدير مركز المهارات السريرية بالجامعة طبيبا طبيبة وفيا وفيا أهلا بكم من داخل مركز المهارات السريرية بالجامعة الليبية الدولية للعلوم الطبية تماشيا مع الاستراتيجية الجديدة للجامعة من 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 باب التطوير تطوير المناهج أنشئ هذا المركز على أساس أن يتدرب فيها الطلبة من بدايات من بدايات دراسته يعني من السنة الأولى في جميع الكليات الطبية بدون استثناء سواء كانت طب بشري أو صيدلة أو أسنان أو علوم أساسية من أول سنة يبدأ الطالب يمر على المهارات السريرية بالمركز ويتدرب عليها على الدمى الدمى التدريبية حتى لا يعرض المرضى بالمستقبل في المستشفيات لـ لـ للأخطاء الطبية اللي تحصل من 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 التجارب من التجربة الأولى لأي شيء فنعلم نحن في الطلبة في المركز هنا الأمان البيئة الأمنة للتجربة سواء كان الحقن أو الخياطة الجروح أو تنبيب القصبة الهوائية أو تنبيب الرغامي الإنعاش الرئوي هنا هنا بداية كل مهارة في هذا المركز بالطريقة الآمنة الجهات المستهدفة جميع الطلبة جميع الطلبة العاملين بالجامعة أيضا تنشأ لهم دورات تدريبية للإنعاش أيضا نستهدف الأطباء من من خارج الجامعة الأطباء المقيمين والأطباء المقدمين على امتحانات ينشأ أيضا المركز ورش عمل تدريبية لطلبة لطلبة الطب حتى من الجامعات الأخرى وأيضا تعد الأمر إلى المستشفيات والعيادات الخارجية أنشأنا في هذه الفترة دورة للاحتياطات الاحترازية ضد الكورونا من مختلف المستشفيات من مدينة بنغازي بإذن الله المركز سيتحصل على احتماد دولي للأدفانسد تروما لايف سبورت أو ما يسمى بالATLS وسيكون المركز الوحيد داخل ليبيا الحبيبة سواء المنطقة جميع مناطق ليبيا الحبيبة سواء شرق أو غرب أو جنوب المعلمين أو المدربين بالمركز هم خريجين كليات طب بشري وخريجي طب, طب أسنان فلدينا لدينا بالمركز الآن طقم إداري وطقم تدريبي تجرى لهم دورات تدريبية باستمرار 
يحدثون التشيك ليست للطلبه باستمرار وباذن الله الخطه المستقبليه لهذا المركز ان يكون مقصد اقليمي لتدريب المهارات المتطوره وليست فقط الاساسيه للطلبه اهلا بكم مره اخرى و نتمنى ان ان تزوروا المركز وتستفيدوا من الخدمات المعروضه فيه وشكرا وصلنا بكم الى فقره عروض التقديميه للمشرفين التعليميين بالمركز متابعه طيبه Hello everyone here we will talk about intravenous injection or cannulation and let us start with our equipment We will need gloves, prescribed medicine, alcohol swabs, cannula with required gauge, tourniquet, syringe with a flushing solution, dressing and plaster, and sharp biohazard waste container. And now we will start our procedure with hand washing. Keep it clean and dry. Then. You have to introduce yourself to the patient, explain the procedure, and gain the consent. Then, after gathering our equipment and choosing the right size of the cannula, position the arm most comfortable to the patient and and identify the vein. Then, apply the tourniquet and put on your gloves. Then you have to clean the patient's skin and let it dry. Now we will insert the cannula at approximately 30 degree. After that, advance the cannula until flashback is seen at the base. The needle should be held stationary whilst the plastic component of the cannula is advanced further into the vein until the plastic tube is fully inserted. At the same time, you have to remove the tourniquet and remove the needle from the base of the cannula, leaving the plastic component. Take the bung and insert it into the end of the cannula. Secure the cannula with the dressing. Flush the cannula with the flushing solution. Dispose of the sharps and any other waste safely and in the end document the procedure. But don't forget to thank the patient. Thank you everyone. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation CBR The abstract, the basic CBR competency is foundational skills in both basic and advanced life support. Many out of hospital cardiac arrest victims don't receive CBR before the arrival of professional rescue. The video based instructor effective, effectively trains the student more quickly than a traditional classroom. The introduction. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation is an emergency life-saving procedure performed when the heart stops beating. So, chest conversion combined with the breathing into the patient will carry the will carry the oxygenated blood throughout the body into the brain. So, CPR act like an artificial heart movement. The material. In an emergency, usually there are no used material, just compression by hand and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. But in case if there is a bag valve mask, we can use it for breathing directly into the person's mouth. Methodology. First of all, we should call emergency response system. Then we should approach the safety and check response for the patient. by shake his shoulder or her shoulder and speak in a loud voice and saying sir sir please wake up wake up then if the patient does not wake up we should <clears throat> we should shake breathing by 
looking for the chest and listening and feeling of normal breathing. Now we should open the airway by head tilt and chin lift. Now we should start with CBR by giving two breathing for the patient by taking a deep breath and give it to the patient by mouth to mouth breathing. Now we should make 30 compression in 5 cm depth. Now we should, after that, we should shake for circulation by shake the carotid pulsation. If there is a response for, for patient, then we should make it for a recovery position. If there is no response, then we should make the CBR again by continued CBR in ratio to breathe and 30 compression. If the patient responds, we should put him in a recovery position. Recovery position, um, someone <clears throat> uh, putting someone in recovery position uh, will keep uh, their airway clear and open also uh, and ensure that any uh, vomiting or fluid won't cause the uh, won't cause them. Putting someone on recovery position will keep uh, their airway clear and uh, open. It also ensures that any vomiting or fluid won't cause them to choke. Result: There is a slightly increase in patient survival rate when the CBR is done, but it is not effective as the other advanced method. But as the primary response. It provides the initial step for the patient recovery before going to the hospital. Uh, conclusion, cardiopulmonary resuscitation is an emergency procedure that combines chest compression and artificial ventilation. To manually preserve intact brain function until further measures are taken to restore spontaneous blood circulation and breathing in a person who is in cardiac arrest. It's recommended in those who are unresponsive with no breathing or abnormal breathing. Thank you. Hello everybody. Today we talk about electrocardiogram or ECG. ECG it is an electrocardiograph. So at first, we will talk about the procedure. Number one, explain the procedure to the patient. Number two, ask the patient to uncover both shoulders. Number three, examine the patient in good light and warm surrounding. Number four, position the patient between 30 to 45 degrees. Number five, ask the patient to uncover the chest. Now, we will talk about ECG machine. Ensure the following point in the ECG machine. Number one, the machine is turned on. Number two, all leads are secured correctly, are clean and in good working order. Number three, there is paper in the device. Applying the electrolyte. Apply the following lead in contact with the skin using gel. Apply limb lead in the following position. The red in right arm, the yellow in left arm, the green in left leg and the black in right leg. Apply chest lead in the following position. V1, right of sternum in fourth intercostal space. V2, left of sternum in fourth intercostal space. V4, left midclavicular line in fifth intercostal space. V6, left midaxillary line in fifth intercostal space. V3, midway diagonally between lead V2 and V4. V5, left anterior axillary line midway between V4 and V6. Record the ECG. Observe the ECG quality and decide if another recording is necessary. Remove leads. Clean the skin of the patient from gel remnant using cotton gauze. Cover the chest of the patient and clean the leads. Thank you. Hello everybody, I am Dr. Heba. I am talking about of the injection. Injection are sterile solution, emotions and 
suspension. Injection is the act of giving medication by use of the syringe and the needle to obtain the desired therapeutic effect. This figure explains the skin layer and the injection site. A skin layer, epidermis, with dermis, and the subcutaneous and the muscles layer. Type of the injection, injection subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous, and the intradermal injection. Another figure explains the degree of the injection. Intramuscular, 90 degree, subcutaneous, 45 degree, and intradermal, 15 degree. The procedure, procedure I need of the equipment. The equipment, sterile gloves, alcohol swab, prescript medication, and syringe needle, goes and the sharp container. How to give in the injection? The first type of the injection, intramuscular injection. Firstly, introduce yourself to the patient, put on the sterile gloves, prepare on the drugs, help in the patient to uncover on the site of the injection. The most common site of the injection, intramuscular, deltoid muscle, gluteal muscle, vastus lateralis. Sterilization the skin with alcohol using circulation motion. Remove the needle guard, gently stretch on the skin to one side, worn on the patient of the sitting. Hold the syringe like dart between thumb and the index finger. Insert the needle firmly and rapidly and 90 degree angle, advance the needle deep into the muscles. Aspirate to make sure blood vessels had not been entered. Inject the drug slowly. Steady tissues immediately adjacent to inject sites in the withdrawal of the needle. Apply gently massage with alcohol wipe. Help in the patient to cover site of the injection. The most common giving by intramuscular injection analgesic like Voltarine or vitamins. The second type of the injection, subcutaneous injection. Subcutaneous injection, the most common site of the subcutaneous injection, outer surface of the upper arm, anterior surface of the thigh or lower abdominal wall. The degree subcutaneous 45 degree. The most common giving by subcutaneous injection, drugs, insulin or heparin. The third type of the injection, intradermal injection. The intradermal injection, the degree in 15 degree. The most common site of the injection, the flexor surface of the forearm. The most common drug given by intradermal PCG or insensitive test like in the bicillin. The last type of injection, intravenous injection. The intravenous injection, the most common site, shows distally vein at the dorsum of the hand or basilus median cubital vein of the forearm. Apply tourniquet above of the propus IV site, distinct of the skin with alcohol along of the site of the injection, remove needle girl, hold syringe between your thumb and the index finger. Stabilize the veins distally with thumb of your free hand. Enter the vein directly along the site about 45 degree. Aspirate to make sure a blood vessel has been entered. Advance the needle into the vein about 90 20 degree angle. Remove of the tourniquet. Inject the drug slowly. Observe any swelling or drug reaction. With the drawer, the needle apply gently massage with alcohol wipe. Help patient to cover site of the injection. Finally, thank you for listening about of the injection. Hello everyone. At the beginning, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Asil Omas. I graduated from Libum. It was 2014. My student's number is 167. Today I'm going to present a posters about the BBE. BBE is a personal protective equipment. Generally, who needs BBE? Patients with confirmed or possible SARS-CoV-2 infections should wear a face mask when being evaluated medically. Secondly, healthcare personnel should adhere to standard and transmission basic precautions when caring for the patient with SARS-CoV-2 infections recommended by BBE is described. 
now we we should know how to put on all don bbe gear more than one donning methods may be acceptable training and practice using your health care facilities procedure is critical below is one examples of donnings step number one you should identify and gather the proper bbe to do and ensure choice of gown size is correct passed on trainings number two be informed hand hygiene using hand sanitizers three put on isolation gown tie all of the ties on the gowns assistance may be needed by others healthcare personnel number four put an above it n95 filtering face piece respirators or hires use a face mask if a respirator is not available if the respirator has a non a nose piece it should be fitted to the nose with both hands and bent or tented do not pinch the nose piece with one hand a respirator's face mask should be extended under chin both your mouth and nose should be protected do not wear respirators or face mask under your chin or store in scraps pockets between patients number five put on face shield or goggles when wearing an n95 respirators or half face piece elastometrics respirators select the proper eye protections to ensure that the respirator does not interfere with the correct position of the eye protections and the eye protection does not affect the fit or seal of the respirators face shields provide full face coverage goggles always also provide excellent protections for eye but fogging is common six put on gloves gloves should cover the cuff rest of the gown seven healthcare personnel may now enter the patient's room now how to take off or doff bbe gear more than one doffing methods may be acceptable training and practice using your healthcare facilities procedure is critical below is one examples of doffings step number one is remove gloves ensure glove removers does not cause additional contaminations of hands gloves can be removed using more than one technique glove in a glove or bare beak Number two is remove gown, untie all ties or unsnap all bottoms. Some gown ties can be broken rather than untied. Do so in gentle manner, avoiding a forceful movement. Reach up to the shoulders and carefully pull gown down and away from the bodies. Rolling the gown down is an ac acceptable approach dispose and trash this uh, cycles number three healthcare personnel may now exit patients rooms number four perform hand hygiene number five remove face shields or goggles carefully remove face shields or goggles by grabbing the straps and bowling upwards and away from head do not touch the front of face shields or goggles Number six, remove and discard respirator or face mask if used instead of respirators. Do not touch the front of the respirator or face mask. Number seven is perform hand hygiene after removing the respirators or face mask and before putting it on again if your workplace is practicing. My resource here is CDC, which is Centers of Disease Control. Hello everyone. Our procedure today is simple interrupted suturing and we will need sterile gloves, suture material, local anesthesia, needle holder, scissor, forceps, saline, and biohazard sharp container and now we will start our procedure steps 
First, hand washing. Then, you have to introduce yourself to the patient, explain the procedure, and take the consent. After that, put on appropriate personal protective equipment, inject local anesthesia, select material of a choice and equipment, then we will start with grasp the needle of suture and holder one third of the way along the length. Insert five millimeters from the edge of the wound at right angle inside the wound. Remount needle, then reinsert under opposite wound edge so that skin edge will emerge from inside wound. Put suture through until remains at initial entry site. Tie with surgical knot using needle holders. Drop the needle and forceps. Take the long thread. Place needle holder behind theater. Wrap thread round needle holder twice. Grab short end with the needle holder and pull it through. Then take long thread and place needle holder behind thread. Wrap thread round once. Grab short end with needle holder and pull through. Cut surface leaving tails of 5 mm and dispose of needle and gloves appropriately. And last, thank the patient and document the procedure. Thank you for listening. السلام عليكم الاندوتريكال تيوب اي تي تي الاوبستراكت ا فاريتي اوف ديفرنت اندوتريكال تيوب ار افيلابل فور ديستينكت بربوس سو ذا ماجورتي اوف بيشنت ويل بي ويل سيرفد وذ ذا سيتي ستاندرد سينجل يومن اندوتريكال تيوب ذا تشويس اوف ان اندوتريكال تيوب ديبندنج اون ذا بربوس ان ذا انستندنت تو سيرف Introduction. The majority of patients undergo intubation for a purpose of airway protection and maintenance of adequate airway for surgical procedure. So, for this purpose, a single human endotracheal tube is most appropriate. Uh, material. Uh, we use the laryngeal scoop and bag valve mask, uh, nasal and oral airways. Uh, partial oxygen pressure detector, uh, endotracheal tube with stellates, uh, airbag for air. Methodology. Uh, first of all, we should check the laryngoscope light work and check the endotracheal tube cuffs. Uh, assemble all the materials close at hand. Now we should uh, position the patient uh, by tilt the head uh, back to maintain the airway uh, opening and now we should give uh, the, uh, the patient uh, oxygen, hyperoxygenate the patient with uh, 100% uh, oxygen for 2 minutes. Open the patient mouth and remove uh, any denture, uh, suction, uh, any fluid. Now. Grasp, uh, the, uh, grasp the laryngeal scoop uh, in the left hand. Uh, separate the patient lips and insert the blade uh, of laryngeal scoop between the teeth, but being carefully not to be uh, not to break a tooth. Pass the blade uh, to the right of the tongue and advance the blade into the hypopharynx. Now push the tongue to the left. Now lift the laryngoscope upward and forward to expose the vocal cord. Now withdraw the stellate. 
and connect the back valve mask and beginning ventilation with 100% oxygen. Verify the tube uh, placement. Secure the tube in a place with a tap. Uh, the result, intratracheal tube uh, causes an increase in partial oxygen pressure and provide a perfect solution for people who can breathe independently. Uh, conclusion, endotracheal tube uh, is uh, often an emergency procedure that is performed on people who are unconscious or uh, who can't breathe on their own. Thank you. Hello everybody. Today we talk about the inhaler. Some people have asthma, so we will talk about how to use the inhaler. We will start with the procedure. Introduce yourself to the patient and clarify their identity. Discuss the inhaler with the patient. Inform them that it contains medication and explain them its works. Describe the step of using inhaler. This R. Remove the inhaler cap. Shake the inhaler. Hold the inhaler upright with your index finger on the top. Hold the inhaler close to your mouth and breathe out completely. Put the mouthpiece in your mouth. Breathe in deeply and firmly. Press in canister stimulously. Inhale fully so that the dose goes deep into the lungs. Hold your breath for 10 seconds. Breathe out and if necessary, repeat the procedure. Describe the steps. Show the patient how to do it yourself. After you have demonstrated the technique, ask the patient to show you how they ought to do. Check that they are turning into correctly and correct any mistakes they are making. End the consultation by asking the patient if they have any questions about the process. Thank you. Hello everybody, I am Dr. Ahiba. I am talking about pleural tapping, thoracosynthesis. Thoracosynthesis is a precutaneous procedure during which the needle is inserted on the pleural space and the pleural fluid is removed. Thoracosynthesis may be diagnostic or therapeutic. Diagnostic refer to removal of the small volume of the pleural fluid for analysis. Therapeutic refer to removal large volume of the pleural fluid for relief asymptomatic. Procedure Introduce yourself to the patient. Explain the procedure to the patient. Consent Place the patient on sitting position at the edge of the bed with arm resting on the table. I need of the equipment of thoracosynthesis, two of the sterile surgical gloves, standard thoracosynthesis kit, iodine swab, and two one liter vacuum bottles for pleural fluid. Merck correct site, the high of effusion determined by absence of a preet sound or by percussion stony dullness of the posterior chest wall or by ultrasound. Mark the needle insertion site with skin mark pen. The site should be 5 or 10 cm lateral to the spine and at least 1 or 2 intercostal space below of the top of the effusion. The needle should not inserted below 9 rib. Prepare in the area with antiseptic solution and apply sterile drop. Using 25 gauge needle place will of local anesthesia, lidocaine, superior edge of the rib and that lie below of the select intercostal space. Switch to 22 gauge needles and begin to anesthesia the deep tissues. The inferior surface of the rib must be avoided since the intercostal vessels and the nerve are located in this region. Walk the needle over superior aspect of the rib. The needle entered of the pleural space, the pleural fluid will be begin to fill syringe. Note in the depth of the penetration and then withdraw the needle. Attach 
18 gauge over needle catheter to the syringe and advance it along superior surface of the rib. Once fluid aspirated, immediately stop advance the needle and good plastic catheter over the needle. Remove needle and cover needle opening with your finger. Attach three way step cock and large syringe to catheter and continuous to aspirate fluid. If additional fluid if needed to be drained for therapeutic purpose, attach to collect tubing stop cock and the evacuation container. Open the stop cock of the patient and the tubing. When completed drain, it should be rapidly removed with catheter. A patient hold, breathe, and the end expiration. Cover the site with dressing and the clean surrounding of the skin. Finally, thank you listening about plural therapy. Hello again, my bosses today is talking about hand washings by soap and waters or hand sanitizers. Hand washings is one of the best ways to protect yourselves and your family from getting sick. Learn when and how you should wash your hand to stay healthy. At the beginnings, we should know how germs spread. Washing hand can keep you healthy and prevent the spread of respiratory and diarrheal infections from one person to the next. Germs can be spread from other people's or surfaces when you touch your eye, nose and mouth with unwashed hands. Prepare or eat food and drinks with unwashed hands. Touch and a contaminated surface or objects. Blow your nose, cough or sneeze into hands and then touch other people's hand or common objects. Key times to wash hands. You can help yourselves and your loved ones stay healthy by washing your hand often, especially during these key times when you are likely to get and spread germs. Number one is before, during and after preparing food, before eating food, before and after caring for someone at home who is sick with vomiting or diarrhea, before and after treating a cut or wound, after using the toilet, after changing diapers or cleaning up a child who has used the toilet, after blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing, after touching an animal's animal feed or animal waste, after handling bit food or bit treats, after touching garbage. Follow five steps to wash your hands the right way. Washing your hands is easy and it's one of the most effective way to prevent the spread of germs. Clean hands can stop germs from spreading from one person to another and throughout an entire community, from your home and workplace to child care facilities and hospital. These five steps every time wet your hands with clean running water, warm or cold. Turn off the tap and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap rather the backs of your hands between your fingers and under your nails. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. Rinse your hands well under clean running waters. Number five, dry, our, dry your hands using a clean towel or air dry them. Use hand sanitizers when you can't use soap and water. Washing hand with soap and water is the best way to get rid of germs in most situations. If soap and waters are not readily available, you can use an alcohol basset hand sanitizers that contain at least 60% alcohol. You can tell if the sanitizers contains at least 60% alcohol by looking at the product labels. Sanitizers can quickly reduce the numbers of germs on hands in many situations, however, Sanitizers do not get rid of all type of germs. 
hand sanitizer may not be as effective when hands are visibly dirty or greasy. Hand sanitizers might not remove harmful chemicals from hands like pesticides and heavy metals. How to use hand sanitizers? Apply the gel products to the palm of one hand. Read the labels to learn the correct amount. Rub your hands together. Rub the gel over all the surfaces of your hands and fingers until your hands are dry. This should take around 20 seconds. My resources here is CDC, which is Centers of Disease Control. Thank you. <music>